welcome to our session on Carno Maps. Carno Maps are, or K Maps, are a valuable visual aid and tool for finding a simplified product of sums or sum of products expression for any logic function that can be expressed via a truth table. Unlike using Boolean algebra and functions for simplification, the K Map technique is simple, fast, and predictably and reliably provides the best or minimum number of transistors and gate solutions to combinational logic problems. Using Boolean algebra the long way, what we've done in the past to construct a truth table and then find sum of products or product of sums is first to identify and fill in the truth table that fully describes the problem to be solved. Then we can either obtain the sum of products by paying attention to all the ones in the truth table, coming up with one term per one in the truth table, or we can obtain the product of sums, which pays attention to every zero in the truth table. Once we've done that, however, we have to simplify the sum of products or product of sums using Boolean identities and other properties. And then we have the option of when we're done of using De Morgan's theorem to either convert the final expression to one that uses only NAND gates and inverters or one that only uses NOR gate and inverters. As a review, let's review the OR function for which the truth table is shown here on the right side of this slide. In order to be able to construct the sum of products for this OR gate, we have three different lines of the truth table we look at because they each result in an output of one, so they'll each have a term in the product of sum of products expression. The first line with A0 and B1 can be expressed simply as A not B. The second line of the truth table can simply be expressed as A B not because A is one and B is zero. And finally, the last line where A and B are both one can just be expressed as AB. Now to simplify this, we're sure we're gonna end up with the OR function in the end, but for purposes of review, let's take a look at how we're going to simplify this term, this output expression. To do that, we're first going to expand it so we can go back and compress it and simplify it. So we're gonna add an extra AB term here so that we can use the distributive property to make this a little bit easier to simplify. And by adding the extra AB term, we haven't changed the meaning at all because a variable anded with itself will simply give us that variable. But now we can distribute the B out of the first two terms as B times A naught or A. And then we can distribute the A out of the last two terms in the expression as A times quantity B or B naught. Our Boolean identities so that show that any variable ORed with itself just give a one. So this gives us out equal to B and one or A and one. And any variable anded with itself is just itself. So the final simplified expression is B or A, or equivalently A or B. And this is what we expect from the OR function, but it provides us with a good review of how we use a truth table and the long way to come up with the simplified sum of products expression for the truth table. Now in the KMAP technique, we construct the truth table as usual to describe the problem that's to be solved. And then we draw this thing called a Carnot map, which will be our visual, visual tool for obtaining a simplified Boolean expression directly from that Carnot map. Once we have the simplified expression, as usual, we can implement using De Morgan's theorem to obtain the purely NAND or NOR gate implementation of that function. Let's take a look at how K maps work. So in this first example, we just have our OR gate again and its truth table over here in the upper right. We have two variables, A and B, each of which can have values 0 or 1. And we're going to go ahead and fill in the K map to express that truth table in a slightly different form. And what that's going to look like 
is for every square in the k-map, that's going to correspond to a certain input combination. So this first square, a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 0, and we know there that out is going to be 0, so we'll just fill in the output in that part of the k-map. We can go ahead and continue in the rest of the k-map. When a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 0, the output is 1, and so on and so forth to finish up the k-map. Once we're done, we can now use this k-map to group the ones together and come up with a simplified expression pretty quickly. So we're only going to create groups for groups of 1, 2, 4, 8, and so on. And in this simple k-map, it's easy to see that we can just draw two different groups in the k-map. And to come up with the terms for the k-map now, the output will be equal to, let's take a look at this grouping first. Notice that in this first grouping, the horizontal grouping, b is constant at 1, and a changes from 0 to 1, going from one square of the k-map to the other. That means that the term in this particular grouping will just be b corresponding to that group. Any variable that changes from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 in a group is not included in the simplified term. We can do the same thing now for the column grouping, the vertical grouping here. Here we see that a is constant at a value of 1 and b changes from 0 to 1. Therefore, we discard b, and what's left over is just a. And now we have the simplified expression for output, which is, as we expect, the OR gate, the OR function. So this was the simplest example. As we move up in the number of variables, things can get a little bit more complicated. So let's take a look at a three-input or three-variable k-map. In this k-map, we're going to have a 2 by 4 grid rather than a 2 by 2 grid like we did in the previous example. And we'll fill it in like we did in the last one. So for a equal to 0, b equal to 0, c equals 0, the output is 0. For a equal to 0, b equal to 0, and c equal to 1, the output is 1. And so on and so forth. 0, 1, 0 gives us an output of 1. 0, 1, 1 gives us also an output of 1. 1, 0, 0 gives us an output of 0. And 1, 0, 1 gives us an output of 0. 1, 1, 0 gives us an output of 0. And 1, 1, 1 gives us an output of 1. Now just like in the previous example, we'll go ahead and group our 1s in groups of 1, 2, 4, or 8. Here we have three groups of 2 each of which will have their simplified term in the sum of products expression. So let's let, take a look at this first group. In this first group, C is remaining the same and it's high. A is remaining the same and is 0, so it's expressed in its complemented or inverted form. And B is changing from 0 to 1, so it's not included in this term. We can do the same thing for the next term. Here, a is not changing, it's 0, so it's expressed in its inverted form. b is not changing, it's 1, so it's expressed in its uncomplemented form. And c is changing from 0 to 1, so it doesn't appear in that expression. And then finally, our last group here, we can do the same thing. We'll find that a is changing from 0 to 1, so it's not going to appear in this term. b is 1 in the group, so it appears in its uncomplemented or uninverted form. And c is also equal to 1. So this is our simplified expression for this 3-input truth table. And we can now implement it using AND gates and OR gates, or convert it to a NAND gate implementation. We can now keep going and do the same thing. Here we have four input variables and 16 lines in our truth table. We're just going to create a 4 by 4 k map to express that truth table. Starting with the first line, 0, 0, 0, 0 will appear in this block here, giving us an output of 0. 
0, 0, 0, 1 will give us an output of 1. 0, 0, 1, 1 will give us an output of 1. And 0, 0, 1, 0 will also give us an output of 1. Moving on to the next column in the K map, 0, 1, 0, 0 gives us an output of 0. 0, 1, 0, 1 gives us an output of 0. 0, 1, 1, 1 gives us an output of 1. And 0, 1, 1, 0 gives us an output of 0. Excuse me. Now, in the next column, we have to go all the way down to this block, this last block here. 1, 1, 0, 0 gives us an output of 0. 1, 1, 0, 1 gives us an output of 1. 1, 1, 1, 0 gives us an output of 1, as does 1, 1, 1, 1. And finally, going to the last column of the K-map and the last block of 4 in our truth table, 1, 0, 0, 0 goes to an output of 1. 1, 0, 0, 1 goes to an output of 1. 1, 0, 1, 1 goes to an output of 0. And 1, 0, 1, 0 goes to an output of 0. So this is how we construct the K-map now for our four input truth table. And it's important as you're first doing these to check and make sure that you've got the right sequence because the truth table is slightly out of order from the K-map. Specifically, the block of numbers that starts with 1, 1 is last in the truth table but third in the K-map. So we'll have to be careful not to make the mistake of putting a 1 in the wrong place, and it's a very common thing to do. So now what we need to do is go ahead and um, look at our groupings in this truth table. And we're going to do that by just circling two groups of two, four, and eight as best as we can. And this one is quite interesting. There are quite a lot of terms in it. And there's probably more than one solution, but we'll go with this grouping here. Now what we have is one, two, three, four, five, six groups of two. So we expect to have six terms in our output. And let's go ahead and figure out what out is doing for us, starting with this group. If we look at this group here, the first group in our first column of the K map, we notice that the A and B are both constant at zero, so they're expressed both in their not forms or inverted forms. And then in the rest of the group, D is not changing either, so D is expressed as a one in its uncomplemented form. The next term here, we can do the same thing. A and B again are both zero and expressed in their not form, and C is expressed in its uncomplemented form because it has a value of one. Moving on to this group, we can see that A is now changing from zero to one, so B is a one, appears in its uncomplemented form, and C and D also appear as a 1 and appear in their uncomplemented or non-inverted form. In this next group here, A and B are both constant at 1, so they appear in their uncomplemented or uninverted form. C is not changing either, but D is changing from 1 to 0, so it doesn't appear in the term. In this next term, almost done, a is not changing, it's at a 1, so it's expressed as A. B is changing, so we'll leave it out of this term. And C is 0, and D is 1. And finally, the last grouping, the vertical one in the rightmost column, A is 1, B is 0, C is 0, and D is changing, so it doesn't appear in this expression. Now note that we can come up with multiple different groupings for each output, but ultimately what's going on here is we end up with a simplified expression, although it may be slightly different than other groupings we might have, as long as we look for the minimum 
numbers or groupings, each with the maximum number of elements, and cover all the ones. Whatever our answer is, it'll be correct. Now, a five-variable map gets pretty tricky. And that's because we have to imagine one group of ones on top of the other. And without going through this particular example in gory detail, this is a five input map where each map expresses what the variables a, b, and c, a, b, c, and d are doing, but for different values of a fifth variable e. The k map on the right corresponds to when e equals zero, and the one on the right corresponds to when e equals one. So if we put these two or imagine them on top of each other, this group and this group will sit on top of each other and they're part of the same group. This group is only a one level group. This group is also separate. And finally, the last group here is also separate. So we have four groups here. And this first group, what happens is that we see C does not change in this group in the green. So C appears in its uncomplemented form because it has a value of 1. And A0, expressed as 0, also does not change. But every other variable, B, D, and E, changes as part of this grouping. So in the end, we only get a two-variable term to express this group of 8. The purple grouping, we're going to expect to see three variables. And in this grouping, we see that A is not changing. It's expressed in its uncomplemented form because it has a value of 1. C not is also not changing. C in the purple group remains a 0, and it's expressed in its complemented or inverted form. And E is also constant at a 0, so we express it in its complemented form. And we can go ahead and do the remaining two groups here. Each of these last two groups, because they're only groups of two, we'll expect to have four variables each in the term corresponding to that group. But we can now do K maps or Carnot maps with two, three, four, and five variables. It gets more complicated as we have more variables, but ultimately we're guaranteed a reliable way to find a minimal or simplified expression for the output. Something that comes up a lot in Carnot maps and logic problems is don't cares at the output. And what that means is that a don't care at the output means that these two input combinations, a, b, and c equal to 0, and a and c equal to 0, b equal to 1, will never happen. So essentially we don't care about the output. And that means there's something about the circuit that says these input combinations are never going to appear. So when we put our x's in a Carnot map, we can either treat them as zeros or ones, whichever is more convenient. So it's more convenient here to get a large grouping of four in this k map and include all the x's. And then we'll also have a group of two here to cover the last term or the last one in the table. In this first group of four, everything is changing around the grouping except for A, which has a constant value of 0. Therefore, it's expressed in its complemented form, or A0. This last term here, A is changing from 0 to 1 in this group. B is not changing. C is constant at a 1, so it also appears in the term for this group. And that concludes the expression for the output. So you can see here that with a don't care situation, we can treat those x's either as zeros or ones, whichever works best for obtaining a more simplified expression. So in this session, we've just taken a, a close look at Carnot maps and multiple variables, including considering don't cares. And we found it's a quick and easily visualized way to obtain a sum of products Boolean function. By extension, we could also use a Carnot map to do a product of sums using many of the same rules that we did in constructing the product of sums directly from the truth table. 
K-maps by far are much easier than simplifying sum of products or product of sums expressions, and unless you have extra time on your hands or suffering from insomnia, they're probably the technique of choice for finding a simplified Boolean expression. And for today, that's all for Carnot maps. Thanks for joining us as we continue to explore the world of digital logic and circuits, and we hope to see you again soon.